Donna Schwartz here, and happy post Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, today, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about ligatures, saxophone ligatures, and uh, my voice is a little raspy, kind of uh, having a little bit of a rough morning. My stomach's a little bit queasy, so I'm not going to do any playing today. I'm going to do a lot of talking. Okay. So thanks for joining me on this Facebook Live session on Friday, November 25th. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, you know, a safe Thanksgiving, um, a joyous one with your family and your friends. Uh, I know I had a, a very nice one myself. So I'm from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to help you with your perf music performance issues and problems and all that kind of stuff. So like I said before today, I want to talk about saxophone ligatures. And um, I'm going to try to keep this fairly brief for the most part. As most people that know me uh, know, I am not an equipment geek. I am not the type of person that runs out and buys every single thing available and tests it out. There's some guys out there that really do a great job with that, um, like Steve Neff, N-E-F-F. -F. Definitely check him out. He does some uh, wonderful reviews of mouthpieces. He probably does some ligature reviews in there as well, so please definitely check him out. And there's other folks as well that, um, you know, that's their forte, pun intended. <laughs> but for now, I just wanted to give like a basic overview of ligatures. And, you know, for most of us, when we start out on any saxophone or even clarinet, we usually start off with a stock mouthpiece. Okay, this is a no-name brand, something that I used to use when I would uh, teach in elementary school. Um, and the reason why I would not use, I would, when I would play along with the kids, I'd, I would use my regular mouthpiece, but in school, what I would do, especially when I'm testing out students' equipment, I would use a stock mouthpiece with a regular ligature and uh, my usual reeds. And the reason why I did that was because I had to emulate or imitate what was going on uh, with their instruments. Hey guys, give me a thumbs up. Can you hear me? That's the first thing. Can you guys hear me loud enough? I'm trying to talk a little bit louder on these live sessions. I'm hearing that uh, my voice isn't picking up as loudly. So today, uh, I'm not going to use my extra mic, my extra Zoom mic, um, because I'm not going to... Thanks, guys. I'm not going to be doing any playing. I'm just going to be doing talking. So let's see how this iPad mic picks up my voice. So uh, when I would... Uh, teaching in elementary school, I would use... Uh, you know, a stock mouthpiece. Great, thanks, Simon. Awesome. Okay, I would use a stock mouthpiece because I wanted to get as close to what a student would sound like, you know, what they would be experiencing in terms of sound as possible. And most beginners start with a regular stock mouthpiece with a, um, a rollover baffle. <laughs> thanks, Nigel. Uh, a rollover baffle and your typical basic ligature. The one that if you sit on it, it just smashes. <laughs> Why do I say that? Because I've seen kids do that. Oh. Anyway, um, these ligatures are okay. They're perfectly fine. You know, uh, when I had bought a mouthpiece from Phil Barone, who's an awesome mouthpiece maker, and he knows his stuff when it comes to saxophones and tone and uh, mouthpieces, his mouthpiece came with a ligature like this. You know, perfectly fine. Remember the screws face towards the right. Sometimes I find I see people doing the opposite with this. I, I can't do it with this mouthpiece, uh, with this ligature, excuse me, where they try to put the screws on top. I think they, they put it to the left. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll work too. But these ligatures are intended to have the screws on the bottom facing towards your right. I know Facebook turns things around here, so, uh, you know, <laughs> it may look a little funky. So anyway, these ligatures are perfectly fine. But I'm going to be honest with you. Um, like I said in the beginning, I'm not an equipment geek. But the one thing that I do tell my beginners, two things actually. You first, we start on no, uh, strength number two reeds on any of the saxes or clarinets. And I usually recommend Rico Royal. Now it's called um, Royal by Diodario because Diodario bought them out. Um, and I have them play on that box of reeds. Um, for about what they usually last maybe two three months or so and then I evaluate and I see how you know how much that student is practicing if they're practicing consistently if um, you know 
if, if their sound is really improving, then I'll switch them to two and a half reeds. So, you know, that's one thing I usually do. You know, after one box of twos, we go to two and a halves. Students not practicing consistently, um, you know, doesn't have the, the time or the effort or whatever, we're going to stay on twos for a little bit. But the other thing I have them do too, <clears throat> after about a year of playing and I see that they're into it, I have them switch from your basic stock uh, ligature, we'll call it like that, to, I've got my stand here full with like a whole bunch of stuff, to a Rovner ligature. Let me take this mouthpiece off, I don't want to damage it. Okay, a standard Rovner Dark ligature. Alright, these are fantastic. They last a long time. Rovner, R-O-V-N-E-R. -E um, at the time, Rovner makes a ton of ligatures and when I was using Rovner ligatures, there was there were a few out. Now there's like a ton. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I've lost count. Okay, but this is the standard Rovner dark ligature. They make these in various sizes to fit metal mouthpieces, to fit uh, hard rubber mouthpieces. Um, you know, all the whole works, the whole nine yards. So I recommend people switching to this after about a year or so. A couple of reasons. Number one, I'm going to get this regular stock mouthpiece out. Uh, this probably won't fit because this is this is a metal thin, so it's not going to fit over this. A um, couple of reasons. Number one, these are really durable. They're going to last you a long time, and they're just they're solid. It's so easy. It's one screw. It goes on the top of the mouthpiece, on facing your right. Okay, really good, and you just you have a great sound. Rovner knows what they're doing, um, but I also do that for stability. Ligatures are designed to keep the reed in place, all right, and to keep your tone or help your tone to be stable. So we know about balanced and unbalanced reeds. I talked about that last week. Um, if you missed that Facebook Live session, check it out on my Facebook page at uh, facebook.com slash Donna Schwartz Music. You look for the thing that says adjusting reeds. Um, but the ligature is the thing that keeps your reed, you know, against the mouthpiece and keep, helps you to keep, uh, to get a stable tone. Thanks for the thumbs up. We all like to be liked. <laughs> okay, so a really good ligature is Rovner. Now, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, there are tons of Rovner ligatures right now. Uh, the two that I have are, this is like for metal mouth pieces because I play metal. Um, and the reason why I mostly play metal, because I do like hard rubber, um, I've had TMJ. I had it really bad when I was a teenager, and I was doing great for a while until uh, <laughs> until I went back to New York last year. And see, the pizza's not that great out here in California. If you're an Italian, I'm half Italian, and you know Sicilian. Okay, um, you gotta have good pizza, and uh, the pizza out here is just not that great. So when I went went back to New York, I went to my sister's. Man, I pigged out on pizza, and unfortunately. I wasn't used to it being so like chewy and stuff, and I I uh, irritated my TMJ. It came back. Um, so the the hard rubber mouthpieces for me feel too big in my mouth, um, so it makes it hard for me. So the metal are much smaller, and it just it's easier for me. So anyway, this is a Rovner for metal mouthpieces, slim tenor uh, metal mouthpieces. But I also had this one. This was really cool. This is the Eddie Daniels version of the Rovner uh, ligatures. You can see that there's a metal plate in there. Okay, it makes the um, it it provides different points of contact. Let's get it better. Different points of contact on the reed. It makes the reed sound uh, brighter. I love pizza too. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm technically I have a dairy allergy. It's not a threatening bad thing or anything like that, so I'm really not supposed to have pizza, but it won't kill me, but I was so desperate, I just, I had to scarf that thing down, it was really, uh, it was good but bad. <laughs> anyway, um, so the Eddie Daniels ligature was, was pretty cool in that it, it has this metal plate and, you know, if you cock it back or cock it forward, it changes the sound a little bit. So um, this is another type of rotor lig ligature. Again, they have so many ligatures out there right now. Um, but the, the thing with ligatures to keep in mind is this. Whatever ligature you have, it's really important that you make sure that it's securely tight. All right. Um, someone that I had, uh, a friend of mine back in New York, 
was mentoring me and he was saying that you got to make sure that those screws are really tight and that ligature is really tight on that mouthpiece so this way you know you make sure that that reed is secure and that it's vibrating and all that kind of stuff so it's just something to keep in mind now I talked about the Rovner ligatures talked about the basic stock ligatures that you would get and again these are fine but I would I would get away from these after a little bit if you're a beginner and I would go to the Rovners um, next. Are there other great mouth, uh, other great ligatures out there? Yeah, I think Rico makes a Rico H ligature. I know the uh, Jody Jazz mouthpieces for a while were coming with those. Now the Jody Jazz mouthpieces come with a, I think it's a tone ring. I think that's what it's called. Um, I haven't tried them, but you know, Jody Jazz is a great, uh, he's, he's a great mouthpiece maker, he knows his stuff, so I'm sure that those ligatures are amazing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Oleg makes uh, ligatures as well. Tons of people make ligatures. But, um, you know, the thing that I use now, because I use the Theo 1A mouthpieces, they come with their own ligatures as part of the mouthpiece. Can I take these off? Yes, there's screwdrivers in here and stuff, I can do that. In fact, a friend of mine uses the Theo 1 amount pieces. He takes off this ligature, he doesn't like it, and he uses a Rovner. And you know, the thing about the Rovners also, they're very durable, they're reliable, they're consistent, and one of the things that they talk about in their in their literature is how um, you know because of their reliability and their consistency, they're you know they can make your reeds just really uh, vibrate properly all your reads and it makes more reads in the box work so you know that's that's really crucial hey guys <laughs> thanks for joining give me a thumbs up tell me that you can hear me that would be awesome um, I'm also speaking not as loud too because there's people that are still ha going through tryptophan tryptophan comas <laughs> after Thanksgiving so I'm trying to keep it a little bit low a little bit on the low today as well um, okay so getting back to ligatures um, the Thea Wanna mouth pieces, if you look at this ligature here, I think they call it the Liberty ligature. There's a screw that we loosen, we put the reed in, and then we tighten. But look at the points of contact. Now the thing with ligatures, a lot of people, um, they switch ligatures because they want either less points of contact or sometimes more. It depends on the style of music that you're playing. So here, you can see where the points of contact are with this ligature. Okay, it's going to be basically in the middle of the of the, uh, the the heel of the reed. Okay, with a couple on the points. Now, also, if you look at this ligature, you see some holes in the side. All right, there's five holes. I have mine set on the second hole from the top. The closer the ligature is, in other words, the higher to the top that you set the ligature, the more focused the sound. The closer to the bottom, right, the lower the hole, the more spread the sound. Okay, so that's also something to keep in mind. Not necessarily for these types of mouthpieces. And again, you don't have, you know, you don't have to get this type of mouthpiece. This, I've been playing for a long time. I'm looking for different types of things compared to what a beginner or an intermediate, intermediate player would be doing. But for me, I like a little bit more focused. But you could do the same thing with your stock ligature by putting it um, a little higher, a little closer to this part of the mouthpiece. If you could see that. You can get that more focused, or you could put this a little lower for a little more spread sound. Okay? And again, the points of contact of this ligature, you could see them, there aren't that many when you think about it. So, that could cause a problem too, in a sense, because sometimes um, you know our reeds are not balanced enough or whatever, and if there's not enough contact with the ligature holding the reed down, you may get some strange and funky sounds, which will obviously affect your tone. So just something to think about there. Um, that's why, you know, I still I really like the Rovners, even though the dark covers a lot more of the mouthpiece. They're just they're so uh, I don't know for me they're just so reliable. That's, that's what I'm thinking. So, normally I would play through some of these, but you know what? I was thinking to myself as I was preparing for this live session, me playing on this stuff actually isn't going to help you so much because it's you that has to make the determination as to what type of ligature is going to work for you and also what style of music you play. 
what kind of sound do you want? Do you want a more focused sound or do you want something that's more spread out? Um, how long have you been playing? You know, what types of mouthpieces are you using? So all these types of things come into play. But if you've been playing for a short while, again, I keep saying the same thing, I'm going to say it again. I don't want you going crazy on equipment. Um, yeah, I don't want you going crazy on equipment. First thing you have to think about is this, is your foundation. And by the way, um, I talk, I'm going to be talking about that in a free uh, training course that I'm putting out for people that are uh, members or subscribers to my weekly newsletter. So if you want to get in on that, it's going to be happening starting next week. Uh, go to my website, DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, and sign up for those weekly newsletters, which, by the way, I give practical tips and solutions and all that kind of stuff in there, um, and notes of inspiration. But uh, if you want to get part of that free training, sign up now so you can get that. And I, I talk about your foundation and how important it is. And um, I also have an upcoming course coming out called Get a Killer Saxophone Tone, where we really deep dive into getting that foundation. Um, okay, Simon, you asked, does the position of the ligature on the mouthpiece have an effect on the sound? Yes. So, again, if you're closer to where your mouth is, you don't want to go past the beak part of the mouthpiece because then the, the ligature is going to fall off. It's not going to be stable. If you go closer, more focused sound. Go further down, like that, it's going to be more spread. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. Um, but like I was saying, you know, if you're first starting out or you're, you know, you've been playing for a little bit, you know, you want to make sure that your foundation is solid. Okay, you want to, uh, you're starting in strength two reeds, you'll probably be at two and a halfs, maybe even threes, that's fine. Um, and then at that point, I would start looking at, if you've been playing for a couple of years, you may want to upgrade your mouthpiece. And that's perfectly fine. You don't have to get an expensive mouthpiece like this. Like I said before, Myers are awesome. Um, if you're not on a Selmer Sea Star, that's another great one. Jody Jazz makes some excellent mouthpieces as well. Um, there's so many out there, I can't even begin to name them. But, you know, then you may want to upgrade your mouthpiece. But at that time, um, if you haven't done it already, definitely upgrade the ligature. Okay, these are okay, but thanks for the thumbs up, but I, I really, my next step, what I always tell my kids before they upgrade their mouthpiece, just get this, <laughs> and I see the way, you know, and I'm talking kids, I see the way that they handle their equipment, and, and these things, they lose the screws, it gets, uh, it gets out of shape, it gets bent, they sit on it, they, they, they step on it, you know, Rovners are very durable, so, you know, that's what I would definitely recommend next, okay, so, um, do you guys have any questions about ligatures and I'm not saying I'm an expert on ligatures I'm not I'm just going off of my experience of playing but also teaching for a long time um, you know certain ligatures are going to work better on certain mouthpieces I have a Phil Barone uh, made this mouthpiece for me a while ago it's awesome it's kind of like the Theo Wane Durga mouthpieces I have a Durga Alto mouthpiece and it's like it's a little bit of a step baffle, very little. It's almost like a rollover, but it's just a little bit of a step. This, uh, man, the sound on this is just really, really great. Um, the reason why I don't use it is because um, I would have to, actually, I'd have to change the cork on my, uh, on my neck and make it a little bit thicker, because this tends to go down, um, this tends to slip on the cork that I have. But the other thing, too, is that this is a little bit um, thicker for me on the top, compared to the Theawana. So sometimes it makes it, like I spoke about with my TMJ before, sometimes it makes it hard for me to uh, have a mouthpiece this big. And it, I know it's not that big, but, you know, when you have TMJ, boy, every little millimeter counts. Um, uh, okay, yeah, the Phil Barone is metal. It, it looks like it's not, like, really finished properly. I was in a rush to get this. <laughs> uh, I, I really pushed it. Um, so yeah, this is this is metal. Most of my mouthpieces are metal, except for when um, I'm teaching in a school and I'll bring stock mouthpiece. 
and I'll try to imitate what those kids, you know, are, are going through. Um, you know, if they have leaks in the horn, it's best if I use a stock mouthpiece because most of them are using stock mouthpieces. Um, I could blow past a leak with a really good mouthpiece, you know. Um, so that's something for teachers to keep in mind as well. You should have like a, you know, stock mouthpieces. Kid has a leak in the horn or something funky is going on. Try to imitate what their setup is as much as you can. A cool, not pile instrument. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. So again, this isn't the be-all and end-all of, of ligatures, but I'm I'm approaching this from the from the position of you may be a beginning player or you may be playing for a couple of years. You know, um, there's there's tons of things out there. It's Black Friday. People are going nuts buying stuff. But um, the thing I'm going to say to you is that you know if your equipment works, stick with it. Most important thing is to develop this. Okay, if the foundation is good, then it's going to help you, um, you know, it's going to give you a great tone, great solid projection, all that kind of stuff. Um, you're not going to need to go so crazy with equipment. The reason why professionals are looking at different equipment, well, they've got their foundation, obviously, but they're looking for something that's going to help them express themselves even more. So their level of hearing, of also thinking about sound is a lot different than someone who's char starting out or just playing a couple of years. Their demands are a lot higher. They're going to need something that's going to be very durable, okay? They're going to need something that they can rely on, something that's consistent, all right? And, you know, that's why a lot of folks are going with the Theo Wane mouthpieces. I mean, they're really, really well made. A lot of folks are going with the Jody Jazz mouthpieces. Again, really, really well made. Um, I have a lot of friends that are using these great mouthpieces, but maybe using a different type of ligature, like the Silverstein ligature. I've not tried it, but I have a bunch of friends that, you know, have bought it and they love it. You know, there's some ligatures that have very little uh, points of contact uh, with, with the reed on the mouthpiece, and that's what some people prefer. They want more of that reed vibrating. Some people, um, especially if they're playing classical music or, you know, or jazz or, or whatever, um, my friend uh, who plays a Durga, a Theawana Durga mouthpiece on his alto, and I think his tenor now. Uh, but anyway, he, he swapped out that Theawana ligature and he put a Rovner on there because it's reliable, it's consistent. It's also easy. It's a lot easier than, um, i got to be honest, sometimes you're at a gig, you got to switch out a reed, you're sitting there, you're like trying to see if everything's lined up, and then you got to get this, this thing, you know, tightened and all that kind of thing. It's, uh, it's not that easy. So, everybody has their own tastes, their own preferences, based on the type of music that they play, their experience playing, the type of equipment that they have, their foundation, okay, you're going to keep hearing me say that, their foundation, all that kind of thing. So, you know, your ligature is, again, another personal choice. Thankfully, they're not as expensive as getting a new mouthpiece, or especially a new horn, or even a new neck, for that matter. So, um... You know, you can kind of experiment, but I'm going to keep saying this also. Don't experiment until this, until you have this. So solid foundation means that, you know, you, you've got your breath support going, your embouchure is set, and you have good command over, you know, I'm going to say the written range of the horn, which is the low B flat to the high F sharp, not the F, but the F sharp. But... Even so, if you have a good command from low C or low D up to the D palm key, then that's a really, you know, that's really great. Then you, you have probably a pretty solid foundation. And it's at that point where we start looking at, you know, maybe upgrading equipment to make things a little bit easier so you're not working so hard. I hope I answered, um, you know, your questions with regards to ligatures. This, this was some of the stuff that was coming into me. Um, over the past couple of weeks. So I wanted to, again, make this one theme. Um, and I keep forgetting to tell people to keep sp uh, spreading this around and sharing this. But uh, we're pretty much at the end right now. Again, this is not a be-all, end-all on ligatures. Thanks for the thumbs up, guys. Um, it's not a be-all or end-all on ligatures because there's so, there, there's so many out there. There's so many opinions on ligatures, all that kind of thing. But this is more geared towards, thanks for the thumbs up, this is more geared towards people that are, again, beginners, intermediates. I don't want you going nuts thinking about that stuff. I really want you going nuts thinking about fixing this. 
And again, if you haven't signed up for my weekly newsletters at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, do it now. So this way you get access to that free training I'm putting out next week. That's going to be the 1st of December. Okay, so you got to be in it <laughs> to win it. You got to be in it to actually to uh, get those emails and get access to those links with the training. All right, so again, happy post Thanksgiving. Hope you had a great time with your families and such. Don't go too crazy spending so much money today, okay, with Black Friday. There are great deals out there. That's awesome. But, you know, as I always say, don't go crazy with the equipment. Get your reads, <laughs> get your reads in order, all that kind of thing. You know, all the stores are having great sales. I know I've gotten emails from Woodwind and Brasswind, Music and Arts, uh, Sweetwater. If you're not aware, by the way, uh, I like giving resources and stuff. Woodwindandbrasswind.com, awesome website, tons of stuff, you know, for uh, wind players, for all musicians. Um, music and Arts, also, uh, when I taught in New York and even out here in California, they're great because they provide, um, they not only sell instruments, they rent. And when I was in New York, uh, I was exposed to them. Uh, the representative came to our school and what was really great, the kids would get a brand new instrument and it would be a brand that I would recommend like Yamaha or Selmer, okay, or Khan for certain instruments. And um, the kids would get a brand new instrument rented and they would, if they liked the instrument, they would be paying into buying it over time. If something happened to the instrument, they come back the next week, they'd either fix it or they'd come back with a replacement that was of equal quality and, you know, new or like new. Awesome. I thought that was the best thing because as a teacher, and I was teaching for a long time, and when I first started teaching, some of the local stores, these instruments that these kids were renting were just really um, not in good shape. And I'm not talking about being not being shiny and that kind of thing. A shiny instrument has nothing to do with its quality. These instruments were... Uh, they were a disaster. And I remember, you know, like playing through them, the low notes wouldn't come out, you know, and I'm thinking to myself, what are you doing? <laughs> so I was really glad that Music and Arts came out with that. And then the other local stores were seeing the competition and they followed suit and they, they upped their game in terms of the rentals. So anyway, Music and Arts is a great website as well. Um, I've written um, uh, an article for them. I'll be writing some more in the future for them as well. Sweetwater. Sweetwater.com. S-W-E-E-T-W-A-T-E-R, sweetwater.com. Great for all musicians. I've gotten, um, oh my gosh, I've gotten music stands from there. Microphones, okay, great for microphones. Uh, what else have I gotten from there? I may have gotten my first wireless, yeah, I think I got my first wireless mic, my AMT, uh, from there as well. Great customer service. I also got a PA system from them, and I got a speaker as well. Great customer service, and the prices are really, really good. So, you know, if you have those kinds of needs, definitely check it out today or Cyber Monday or the day after Christmas. Um, those are great places to do your shopping. Okay, guys, thanks for joining me. Uh, kind of, Well, early in the morning here in California. It's probably midnight somewhere else or wherever you're coming from. Again, if you have any questions that, you know, you want answered um, with regard to, like, saxophone tone, even trumpet tone or that kind of thing, um, you know, technique or any of those types of things, put them on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Donna Schwartz Music. Give it a like, okay, and um, ask those questions there or message me. Um, subscribe to my weekly newsletter, and you're going to get weekly tips as well, and then you could shoot me an email if you have a question about something, and I will try to answer it. If I don't know the answer, I'll look it up. That's how it works. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. I'll see you soon. Take care.